And whether you noticed a deliberate mistake? No, it wasn't a deliberate mistake. I, I got so busy in administration, answering emails, stuff like that, that I, I hadn't updated the graphic on the intro there. It should have read, uh, what should it read? Good morning, North America. Anyway, good morning, North America, and good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about some of the stuff the Lord has been just bubbling in my spirit. I know we're going through very difficult times. I know there's a lot of upheaval and a lot of, uh, well, what would you call it? Uh, you know, not normal, not normal, not normal stuff. But we should be used to that. We should be used to that. Um, but I'm really excited. I just got another glimpse of what the Lord is doing. And uh, just, oh, just witnesses and resonates in my spirit. Um, we're looking today, uh, this is our second, uh, what do you call it, second broadcast on the same theme, uh, Feast Upon My Word, John's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Now, uh, I don't know whether I can, let, let me get the announcements out the way, let me get the announcements out the way. Uh, this coming Sunday, we are going to uh, have a it's not a live but it's a recorded broadcast and it will go out on the Vine Press page just to keep you on your toes and it's a word from Margie Hogg she feels that she has a uh, word uh, for the church an open letter if you like to the church I will be discussing that uh, I'm hoping to try and record it tomorrow and then we'll put it out live on the Sunday now the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying my best to pace this, you know, the whole thing that we're, we're doing on the live broadcast. Doing Monday to Friday, twice a day, you've got to pace yourself. And so I'm trying to keep the weekends free, you know, not that they're free because I'm still doing stuff behind the scenes, but uh, trying to keep the weekends free. So this Sunday will be uh, uh, Margie Hogg, and sharing really and you know she has every right to share it she's not a novice uh she's not a new believer she's been on the road quite a while <laughs> like myself um so she you know we should we should you know one thing that's lacking is you know fathers and mothers in the church maternal and matri uh, matriarchs and uh What's the other word for the male side of it? Anyway, fathers, fathers in the church and mothers. And I believe that Margie is a mother, you know, to the church. She's had a long, lifelong experience of walking with the Lord. She was a teacher in her uh, younger days. So, you know, we should make room for people like Margie to just share. So I'm going to hopefully and I'm just waiting back. I don't know if you're on Margie on this yet. Let me just quick, quickly have a look here. Um, let's, yeah, you're on Margie. Uh, <laughs> I did send you a couple of emails this afternoon, Margie, and you know, there's so many dates going around in my head. If you could let me know if we're okay to do a recording tomorrow and we'll do a pre-run through it, you know, to test the software and everything, just let me know in the comments. If not, we'll, I can do a Saturday if need be, you know, because we're in into December and, uh, <laughs> you know, don't mind the odd weekend. Um, and Jean's going shopping with my daughter, so grocery shopping with my daughter. So it gives me, I do have a bit of free time on Saturday. Um, now, what was the other thing I was going to say to you? So that's Margie. Then the following Sunday, I'm trying to get this in before the, um, 18th, and I don't know, but I've got my diary with me. Um, before the 18th of December, let me just get my diary. Uh, as you can see, I'm organized. <laughs> oh, dear me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the last 
the last morning and evening for two weeks, we'll have a two week break over Christmas. And the last one will be the 16th of December, Friday, the 16th of December will be our last double morning and evening. Uh, and then we'll break and we'll come back. Uh, let me see, just bear with me. I've got to find the page here. Um, bum, bum, bum. We'll come back on the 3rd of January, 2022. That's right at the beginning of January, isn't it? So that's a two week break, starting from the, um, well, the last one will be on the 17th of December and then back on the 3rd of January, morning and evening. Uh, so in order to get that, usually we do once a fortnight on the Sunday nights, but in order so that, you know, it's coming up to Christmas, a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm just waiting to hear from um, Melinda Fish and if she can do the following week after Margie, that will be a live one. We'll do that actually live. It won't be recorded. We'll do it live. And that will be, um, let me see, just stick with me now. Um, so Margie is on the 5th Sunday uh, at 8 p.m. It'll be on the Vine Press page. And then if, you know, Lord willing, and if Melinda can fit it in, we'll actually do a live on the 12th as well. So that's two weeks on the run, and then there'll be no more lives until the new year. Okay, on no more Sundays till the new year. Am I making myself clear there? Um, anyway, uh, let me just have a look at your comments just to make sure. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Uh, Sunny this afternoon. Okay, <laughs> okay. Am I making myself clear? If you've got any questions, just put them in the comments, and I'll try and answer those. So, okay. Our title today is "Feast Upon My Word." The scripture text is John eight verses thirty one and thirty two. Okie dokie. Right. Let's go over then. Without any further ado, just got to make sure I press the right button here and see who we've got on in it. The first one on on my screen anyway is Joyce. Uh, Joyce uh, Stencil rejoicing in a beautiful day in North Carolina. God bless you, Joyce. I hope you got all my emails okay. Um, Rosie Holder, good evening from Cardiff. Oh, that's a very official uh, introduction there, Rosie. Good evening from Cardiff. Good evening to you too, Rosie. <laughs> Uh, Margie Hogg, my chair, just excuse the squeaking in the background, it's my chair is a little bit squeaky. Uh, Margie Hogg, hello to my fellow whisperers, 11 a.m. in Oklahoma. Uh, and then, let's see, who did we have on there? Rosie, Joyce, I should ring the bell, shouldn't I? Let me just give Rosie a, a tinkle on the bell here. Um, there you go, Rosie. Uh, who else did we have on? Uh, Queenstown, Janet. Um, ding dong, merrily along. That's all the people outside in North America. I'm giving you a little tinkle on the bell. Uh, so we did Margie, didn't we? Margie Hogg, hello to my fellow whispers, 11 a.m. in Oklahoma. Then we have Janet at Queenstown. I just rung the bell for you, Janet. <laughs> and then Barbara Pugh. Bob's, I just got your email in about half an hour ago. So I haven't, I just shared quickly with Gina. It, it resonates with a lot of stuff that uh, the Lord's been showing us. And um, I sent you an email back. I don't know whether you got it or not. We are delighted to be, well, let me just bring that up. Uh, Barbara Pugh, we are... We pews are, de oh, yeah, that's what was throwing me, Barbara. Uh, we pews are delighted to be with the worldwide whisperers. Yes, worldwide. All over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, like the prophet said it would be. <laughs> 
Good morning, Luan, uh, from Nebraska. Blessings to you and your husband. I hope everything's okay there, uh, you know, with his health and such. Uh, we haven't had any updates, as far as I know, on the uh, on the prayer group. Uh, but nice just if you could give us an update there, Luan, how things are going. Uh, Maria, shalom everyone from Oxford in Banbury, England. There you go, Maria. Good evening to you. Jella, evening, all night, night, morning, glory, afternoon, delight, everyone on the wine press, whisperers. There you go. I think that deserves a double ding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's just I like ringing the bell. <laughs> David Wilson, good morning from Southland, New Zealand. Dave, and is, it, is it good morning? Yeah, it's morning, isn't it? Are you on your tractor? <laughs> um, good morning to you, Dave. Uh, you work long hours. Uh, Car Carmen, uh, I can't pronounce your second name. Carmen Guerrero. <laughs> Good afternoon from Bossard, Quebec, Canada. Blessings to you all, wine bibbers. Do you know what I was thinking? Do you know what? I, I, we don't know what's going to happen, do we? On, on Everything is in God's hands. That's what I love. Everything is in God's hands. So we don't know what's going to happen. But do you know what? I was thinking, Carmen, um, you know, we had a get together uh, with people in Leicester a few weeks ago. It would be nice, I said to Jim, wouldn't it be nice if we could do that in Canada and in America and New Zealand, Australia, just to have a get together. I don't mean like we used to do it, you know, and do meetings and stuff, but just to get together and have a chat and, you know, you know, just fellowship, fellowship and a drink with one another. Okay, okay, now stop. John, I've got to talk to myself now. Now, John, come on, stick with the program. <laughs> Hit the points. <laughs> okay, Valerie and Jim. Hello all from Leicester. Jim and Val. There you go. <laughs> uh, you, I'm not going to let you forget that, Jim. I'm not going to let you forget your comments about missing you <laughs> and just saying hello to Val. So there you go, Jim or James or Jacob or Jimmy. Good evening to you both. Laura, enjoying your partner's page today. <laughs> Sunny this afternoon. Wow, Laura, you, you're picking up from Doug there. You're getting that weather anointing, weather forecast anointing. Good morning to you. Julie Ashmore, good evening. Uh, now, I've got to not forget, don't get offended if I miss you on the bell. It's just I'm getting a little bit tipsy. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, uh, Julie. Uh, Nigel, Nigel Stock Wine Bibbers, us. <laughs> How many glasses have you got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Wouldn't it have been cheaper? Uh, wouldn't it have been cheaper, uh, Nigel, to have got a barrel? <laughs> okay, Margie Hogg. Oh, hang on, I've got to ring the bell for you. Hang on. Let me ring the bell. There you go. I've got a feeling we ain't gonna we ain't gonna hit the points tonight. Oh, God help me. Margie Hogg, first day is fine. I would like to know a time. Okay, Mark. No man knows the time or the hour, but um, let me see. First day is fine now. Um, a time. Will you tell me a time and I'll fit in with you? As long as it's not near five o'clock my time do you know what i mean give me a couple of hours in between any time from uh any time from 12 noon 12 noon to say four o'clock my time and you're six hours behind me so i'll let you work that out you're the teacher you're the mathematician so you shouldn't have a problem <laughs> okay there you go there you go okie dokie right kim out kim out my uh, pilot, co-pilot. Uh, oh, we're not flying, are we, Kimmo? Uh, good evening. A little more snow here, but not yet even one inch. We Don't mention that word, Kimmo. We've not had any more snow. We just had a little dusting of it. Uh, what are you saying, Joyce? 
you're praying that Melinda comes on. Yes, she is. She does want to do it, Joyce. That, that's not the problem. I've just got to get the timing right, you know. She, uh, where is she? She's in the middle of the country. Oh, what's the name of that place? Um, oh, boy, I can't, I can't remember the name of the town, Joyce, but I think she's six hours behind us. Um, so I've written to her today, and hopefully she'll confirm. Uh, now, Nigel, I don't know what you're not too far from you, hey? Uh, both my wife and I have family living in Hudson, not too far. I don't know who you're talking to there, Nigel. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, Justin. <laughs> I wondered why I was getting drunk. Oh, dear me. Good, good evening to you, Justin. Hope all is well. I believe your father-in-law... Was it your father-in-law has passed away? Just just condolences. I hope I'm right on saying that. Just condolences to your wife. Um, <laughs> drunk announcements, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, don't get me too drunk, Justin. Don't get me too drunk. Ding dong, boing, hey and a ho. Yes, uh, the missing beetle. <laughs> i got to move on here because you've you got to stop it. You got to stop this because you're getting me. You're getting me too drunk. Okay, have another. Have another. Oh boy, God help me now. Very impressive technical skills. Um, it's been two years of practice. <laughs> two years of practice, Justin. Not only that, but I got the I got the cover wrong on the Good Afternoon, Good Morning America, North America. Uh, I got the cover wrong. You know what I mean? It's very difficult. One man band, you know trying to operate a bit like Godfrey when I first met him he used to have a drum on his back well no he had a drum on his foot and he used to play the drum and something else anyway there you go there you go anyway ah lovely uh, okay you're talking to one another Madeline hi friends across the globe love from Florida I was on the wrong day I think no Madeline I put the wrong cover on that was the point you know usually you have that blue cover good morning North America well I took that cover off because it was covering another scene and it, it, it's all technical stuff you wouldn't want to know you wouldn't want to know about it it's all technical stuff you've got the right day it's Wednesday okay it's Wednesday and it's, what date is it today? Is it the 2nd, 2nd of October? No, 1st of December. 1st of December. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay. Now, did I ring the bell for you, Justin? Hang on, hang on. There you go, there you go. I love this bell. This bell is so good. It's so good. Um. Okay, ding dong. Yes, ding dong. Carmine, Carmine. Ah. Uh, Good. Now, oh yeah, from uh, Quebec. Yes, yeah. Sorry, I, I just. Um, okay, Julie, Julie Groves. Oh, you're talking to somebody else, though. Yeah. Uh, now, are you saying Luan Bill is doing well? He will see the cardiologist again in January to determine if he needs to have an ablation. We are so grateful for all your prayers. Tell you what, let's just take ten seconds. I'm not going to say anything. Let's just take 10 seconds. I'm going to put the globe picture on. And uh, we'll take 10 seconds and then I'll ring the bell. And I want you during those 10 seconds just to lift each other up in prayer. There you go. Uh... Now, forgive me if I'm not getting your, your name out. L. Maria Van Aswagen Smith, Quoteng, <laughs> South Africa. Sorry, L. Maria. Um, aren't you new? I don't think, I don't remember you being on before. Just, um, you're from South Africa. Uh, do you know uh, Christine? She's in America at the moment, in Florida with her son. Let me ring the bell for you. I'll give you a double ring because I think you're new with us today. And uh, there you go. 
Uh, Jerry Gustin, Shalom, John and Whispers. Beautiful weather here in Tulsa. Only 24 hours from Tulsa. <laughs> Oh, Kimo, <laughs> I just started to read Job. It is interesting and also difficult. You know what, Kimo? Uh, Kimo, sometimes there's a time and a place, isn't there? You know, I was telling you about Song of Songs. I I never really got into that book until we started doing these mornings and evenings with Brian Simmons's uh, book, I Hear His Whisper. Um, but do you know what's really opened up to me? So I just pray right now, Father, in the name of Yeshua, just open up this book of Job to Kimo and let him see revelation from it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, uh, <laughs> Justin, stop, behave yourself. Uh, strong, drunk weather today. <laughs> oh, dear me. Uh, Joyce, Luan Wyman, thanks Luan, I've been meaning to ask, trusting all is well. <laughs> I'm not even going to put that up, Justin, I'm not even going to put that up, Justin, little glory creatures, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh God, help me, help me Lord, help me. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, my barber's just cut my eyebrows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't help that. What can I do? What can I do, Justin? What can I do? Uh, you love the 10 second pauses. Yes, Joyce. Um, you know, some people think, um, let me just go so I can have a look at you. Some, uh, Justin can see my eyebrows. Um, some people think that's new age, you know what I mean? The meditation, bang. No, what the bell does is it just zones us in. Don't forget everything new age is, is an imitation of the real thing. We have the real thing. So when we do that 10 second break and then I ring the bell and you know what I might do? I might ring it at the beginning and the end. So it just focuses you in on what we're praying for. You love those 10 second, uh, <laughs> came on. <laughs> My barber just cut my eyebrows. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, let's go to the bottom, can we? Let's go to the bottom of the barrel. Oh, God help me. <laughs> got a load of drinkers on today. Oh, it's your first time on there. Welcome, you're welcome. Uh, we're a little bit crazy, but what can we do? Uh, <laughs> What are you saying, Bob's powerful anointing as we lifted the family up into his light? Yeah, it's times like that when you just focus your prayers, just focus them and just, just you know, ascend into the heavens. Uh, Aaron, pray for our Supreme Court today. They are hearing arguments today to overturn Roe versus Wade. Well, I tell you what, that's a very important one, isn't it? So let's just do a 10 seconds again. There you go. During those 10 seconds, just take the time. <laughs> All this drunk, well. <laughs> Okay, okay. Now, come on, come on. <laughs> stop it, stop it, Justin, stop it. I gotta, I gotta hit the points, I gotta hit the points, and I'm seven, do you know what, we're seven minutes towards the end, and I haven't even started yet. Oh. <laughs> I gotta tell you a story about these teeth. I uh, went to Brazil, when I was younger, I ate a lot of candy and sweets and I was always going to the dentist and you know what the dentist got more money for pulling your teeth than what he did for repairing them so he would always pull my teeth out and one day I stood in the park and I said oh god I've lost most of my teeth and I, anyway I went to Brazil a number of years later and I was at a church and the pastor came up to me and he said John 
I hope you don't mind, but we'd like to take an offering and uh, get, you know, t take it to my dentist who's a Christian and uh, get you implants. So I must have had about 14 implants. That's how bad my teeth were. You see? Anyway, um, what am I saying? Why am I saying that? The, de the dentist who I went to couldn't speak English. He was a Christian, lovely guy, Christian. And I've got to tell you, I sat in that chair from 6 p.m. because he would do it after his normal appointments. I sat in that chair from 6 p.m. till midnight. Needles, 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 needles. And every time he'd go to give me a needle, the only English he understood was, it won't hurt. <laughs> I'm the best, I'm the best, what do you call those people that give you the needles? Anyway, that's what he said to me, but I've got to tell you, it did hurt, it did hurt. So I'm very, very thankful to, to Brazil. That was in Brazil that I, I got my teeth done a number of years ago now. Uh, so anointed, glory teeth, yes, Justin, glory teeth. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to get to where I wanted to go today so let's go over to i tell you what let's go over to the reading and it's taken from the passion translation and the subheading is the son gives freedom verse 31 jesus said to those jews who believed in him when you continue to embrace all that i teach Okay, now don't forget, he's having this conversation. He's having this debate with the Pharisees. He's teaching, he's teaching uh, people that believe, but in the middle of it, the Pharisees bring a woman that's caught in adultery and they're trying to catch him out and he defeats them on it. Remember, we, we covered it on, we covered it on Monday's, uh, session bring your shame to me they brought this woman stood her in the middle to humiliate her and also to catch out uh, Jesus now let me tell you something if that's what your religion does to you if that's what what you call church does to you humiliates you and shames you you've got to question whether it's church you have to question whether it's church because Jesus came to save, not to condemn. And he delivers it, remember? On the Monday, he bent twice, he kneeled twice on the ground and he wrote the letters and we said from Jeremiah chapter 17, was it? That Jeremiah talks about people that do not follow the Lord, you know, they're written in the dust. They committed spiritual adultery, yet we're putting on all the pomp and pride. So it's in the midst of all of that that we come now to verses 31 and 32. And Jesus is teaching them and he's telling them, look, let's go back to it. Uh, Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach, you prove you are my true disciples. So there's the proof, isn't it? There's the proof. Do you embrace his teachings? Do you embrace his ordinances, his ways? If you, uh, what does, how does it say it again? Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him. So he's talking to the believers now. Pharisees are still, you know, arguing with him, but he's talking to the believers and he's saying the truth or the proof of a true believer is that they don't just make one decision, you know, to use God as a fire escape, but they make a decision to follow him continually through bad, good, whatever, through valleys, mountaintops. They continue to follow him. And we've been talking about that these last few days, the importance the importance and the secret of uh, 
being steadfast is to continue in something daily, daily. And that's why we have these broadcasts morning and evening, <clears throat> Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. UK time and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, twice a day. So we're hitting this double and it's this. Uh, let me go over to the, to the chart here. Uh, it, in my outline Bible, it splits this passage into two parts and I this is one I prepared earlier uh, we saw on Monday release shame to me and the woman caught in adultery and then the second part is Jesus sermon and it picks it up from verses 12 to 59 now we said in this morning's uh, uh, broadcast that Jesus had a dialogue from verses 12 to verse 59, he had a dialogue back and forth with the Pharisees. So the two people involved there, well, there were also believers as well, but why I'm saying this number two is, and what's very interesting is, it's this second letter. Remember, I, I, I may have taught this some time ago, that the Hebrew letters are what? hold everything together and this is a creative letter it's creative it's the number two uh, it, it can have two meanings opposites it can have a negative I'm writing dead small forgive me but I'm trying my best here it can have a positive and here we see right in this chapter the hallmark of this letter bait you have the uh, verses 1 to 11 you have the incident with the woman caught in adultery and then you have Jesus sermon uh, to the believers and then you have this whole debate that goes on from verses 12 to 59 between Jesus and the Pharisees very very interesting if you get if you get if you get an overview and this is where error comes in when people just take a text or two verses out of the context has an element of truth but is not the whole truth you don't see the whole picture and here in John 8 which has what 59 verses if you can if you can split it if you can see it in its components it's a lot easier to chew. You can't eat an elephant in one go. You have to eat it a little bit at a time. You can't grasp truth in one go. It comes in layers. It comes line upon line, precept upon precept. Haven't you found that? Haven't you found that when the Lord is showing you something, you'll hear it from here, you'll hear it from there, from different people, layer upon layer, line upon line, the Lord just hitting us with truth. And... Um, <clears throat> So there you have it in that. Now, this verse 31 and 32 is right in the middle of, let me see now, um, let me just go back to this. Um, here we have verses 12 to 59. There are four, and what's interesting is that number four is this letter here, the door. Uh, hang on, have I got that right? No, no, it's not. It's this. Sorry. It's the Dalit, the door. And there are four uh, debates that take place here. Four rounds. We haven't got time to go into. I'm just going to give you just an appetizer on it. We have four rounds. Um, and I touched on that this morning. Uh, let me just bring that up quickly for those that didn't see it this morning. Uh, the helicopter view, round one verses 12 to 21, round two verses 21 to 30, round three verses 31 to 47, and that's the round. This is where our text is situated in verses 31 and 32. But do you see what I mean about, about getting the whole context, about seeing the whole picture? If you don't see the whole picture, you think, what, what's the saying? You can't see the wood for the trees. 
<laughs> anyway, that's it. That's it. That's quickly it. We got drinking a little bit too much there today. And I've got places to go, people to see. And Jean is waiting for me to buzz her to let her know when to put the supper on. So we need to go to Ding Dong, Boing, Hey and a Ho. We need to go to today's devotional reading. And it's, uh, there we go. Feast upon my word. Beloved, I want you to align your thoughts with mine, to feast upon my word, so that its abundance within you will overflow into your words and, what's it say? Uh, overflow into your words, actions, and even the atmosphere around you. I have given you the power and authority as my child to create a life of blessing and success here on earth. You no longer have to live in defeat, but I have given you the power, listen, this is the word for today, I have given you the power to create a life of heaven on earth, a life of purpose as you partner with me to release my glory. My word contains all of the wisdom, insight, and counsel you need to live a life of abundance, purity, and fruitfulness. Oh, oh, did you get that? Did you get that? Let me read it again. My word contains all of the wisdom, insight, counsel you need. Now listen, listen. Live a life of abundance, purity, and fruitfulness. I will teach you how to walk in the power of my word so that the world, ding dong, boing, hey and a ho, around you flows with love, joy, peace, freedom, health and prosperity. There you have it. There you have the gospel all in one. There you have the recipe of the gospel. Love flows. You flow with love, joy, peace, freedom, health, and prosperity. Choose the righteous posture of faith and expect my goodness to manifest in every area of your life. Quickly, I'm well over time here, but listen, listen, listen. Let's take a 10 second break and just dwell on that. To expect, what did I say? Expect. No, I'm on the wrong one. Ding dong. No, there we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Choose the righteous posture. Let me just see. Um, let me just see if I can. Uh, let me just yellow that. We are running right. Okay, there we are. Choose the righteous posture of faith. Let me just give you a 10 second break. Here and just meditate on this and, and just say, Lord, I choose this. There you go. There you go. Receive that right now in the name of Yeshua. Let your heart meditate on my truth so it will pour forth my desire and lead you in my will. John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. Jesus said to those Jews who believe in him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release, listen, listen, it will release true freedom into your lives. John 8 verses 31 and 32. So there we go. I can smell the supper burning now, so I have to go. God bless you. Farewell, goodbye. I'll be the same goodbye. I have to go. I cannot tell a lie.